Did you know that 99.7% of data points fall within three sigmas of the mean in a normal distribution? That's right, folks. The humble sigma, a term you might have encountered in your high school statistics class, holds a surprising amount of weight in the world of data. In statistics, a sigma, represented by the Greek letter sigma, is a measure of how much individual data points in a distribution deviate from the mean or the average. The more spread out the data, the larger the sigma and vice versa. It's a handy little tool that helps us understand and visualize the distribution of data. But here's the catch, sigmas are not normal. They're a bit of an anomaly in the statistical world, and there's quite a bit of intrigue surrounding them. Intriguing, isn't it? Let's dive deeper. Now, you may be wondering, what does normal distribution have to do with sigmas? Well, let's dive right into it. Normal distribution, also known as the bell curve, is a statistical concept that describes how data points tend to cluster around the mean or average. It's called a bell curve because when you plot the data, it forms a bell-like shape. It's symmetrical with the highest point representing the mean, median, and mode of the data. Now enter sigmas. In the world of statistics, a sigma is a term used to measure how much a set of data deviates from its mean. In other words, it's used to measure standard deviations. The term sigma is derived from the Greek letter sigma, sigma, which is used to denote standard deviation in statistics. In a normal distribution, about 68% of data falls within one sigma of the mean, 95% falls within two sigmas, and about 99.7% falls within three sigmas. This is often referred to as the 68-95-99.7 rule, or the empirical rule. But why is this important? Well, knowing how many sigmas away from the mean a data point is allows us to understand its rarity or commonality. For instance, if a data point is three sigmas away from the mean, it's fairly rare and could be considered an outlier. On the other hand, if a point is within one sigma, it's quite common. So you see, sigmas in normal distribution go hand in hand. They help us understand the spread and patterns of a data set, providing insights into its overall behavior. Whether you're analyzing test scores, measuring product quality, or tracking rainfall, understanding sigmas and their role in normal distribution is key. To sum up, sigmas aren't just Greek letters or symbols, they're powerful statistical tools that help us make sense of the data around us. So, in a nutshell, sigmas play a crucial role in understanding data distribution. How does sigma hold up when compared to other statistical concepts? As we delve deeper into the realm of statistics, it's essential to understand how different concepts intersect and diverge. Today, we're pitting sigma against other statistical stalwarts, the mean, median, and mode. Let's start with the mean, or the average. This value is computed by adding up all the data points and dividing by the number of data points. The mean is a useful measure of central tendency, but it can be misleading if our data set has outliers. Extreme values on either end of the scale can pull the mean away from the center of the data. This is where sigma shines. As a measure of variability, sigma gives us an understanding of how spread out our data is around the mean providing a more nuanced view of the data set. It tells us how much deviation exists from the average. By offering this perspective, Sigma helps us identify outliers and understand the distribution of data more effectively than the mean alone. Next up, the median. The median is the middle value in a data set when arranged in ascending or descending order. It's a robust measure of central tendency as it's not affected by outliers. However, the median doesn't tell us anything about the dispersion of data. Again, Sigma comes to the rescue. While the median gives us a central point, Sigma provides the context. How much data varies around that central point, it's like knowing the heart of the city and also understanding how far the suburbs stretch. Lastly, let's consider the mode, the most frequently occurring value in a data set. The mode gives us a glimpse into the most common outcomes, but it doesn't inform us about the variability in the data. Sigma, on the other hand, provides a measure of spread, allowing us to understand the data's dispersion around the most common outcome. It's akin to knowing the most popular dish in a restaurant and also understanding the range of other dishes people order. In essence, Sigma brings a unique perspective to statistical analysis. While the mean, median, and mode give us a sense of central tendency, Sigma helps us understand the variability around these central values. It's like the lens that brings the statistical picture into focus, providing a more comprehensive view of data distribution. Moreover, Sigma is crucial in many statistical tests and models, 
playing a key role in hypothesis testing, confidence intervals, and predictive modeling. Its ability to quantify variability makes it a powerful tool in the hands of statisticians, researchers, and data analysts. So how does Sigma hold up against other statistical concepts? Quite well, we'd say it not only complements the mean, median, and mode, but also adds a critical layer of understanding that these measures of central tendency cannot provide on their own. As we can see, sigmas offer a unique perspective in statistical analysis. Despite their importance, there are quite a few misconceptions about sigmas. Let's dive into some of the common misconceptions about sigmas and debunk them. The first misconception that many people have is that sigmas are only relevant to normal distribution. While it's true that sigmas play a significant role in normal distribution, their application isn't limited to just that. Sigmas are essentially a measure of variability or dispersion in a set of data. They are used in a wide range of statistical applications from analyzing data trends to predicting future outcomes. So, no, sigmas are not just about normal distribution. Another common misconception is that sigmas are always a representation of population standard deviation. While sigmas are often used to represent standard deviation, they can also represent other measures of dispersion, such as the range or interquartile range. The key is to understand what measure of dispersion is most appropriate for your data and research question. There's also a misconception that sigmas are difficult to understand and use. Yes, sigmas involve some complex mathematical concepts, but with a basic understanding of statistics and a bit of practice, anyone can learn to use and interpret sigmas effectively. Lastly, some people believe that sigmas are only useful in academic or research settings. This couldn't be further from the truth. Businesses use sigmas all the time to understand their data and make informed decisions. For instance, a company might use sigmas to analyze sales trends or to predict future demand for a product. So, you see, sigmas are versatile tools in the world of statistics. They are not just tied to the concept of normal distribution. They can represent different measures of dispersion, are not necessarily difficult to understand, and are useful in a myriad of practical real-world situations. Sigmas, therefore, are not just confined to normal distribution. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to our channel. Now that we've debunked some myths, let's explore the real-life applications of sigmas. Sigmas aren't just about theoretical statistics. They have a significant and practical impact in several fields, including finance, healthcare, and quality control. Let's delve into the financial world first. In finance, sigmas are used to measure and manage risk. They help determine the volatility of investment portfolios and guide decision-making. For example, a high sigma value might indicate a higher risk and potential for substantial returns or losses. On the other hand, a low sigma value suggests a lower risk, but also lower potential returns. By assessing these sigma values, financial analysts can make informed decisions about investments and risk management. Moving on to healthcare. In the medical field, sigmas are pivotal for quality control and process improvement. They're used to measure variations in healthcare processes from patient wait times to surgical procedures. By identifying and reducing these variations, healthcare providers can improve patient outcomes, safety, and satisfaction. A Six Sigma process, for instance, is considered to be nearly defect-free, leading to better patient care. Lastly, let's consider quality control and manufacturing. Here, sigmas play a key role in ensuring product quality. They're used to measure and control process variability, with the aim of reducing defects and improving product consistency. A higher sigma level indicates a process that produces fewer defects and a higher quality product. In all these fields, sigmas serve as a powerful tool for decision-making and improvement. They help us understand and manage variability, leading to better outcomes and performance. Whether it's deciding on an investment strategy, improving patient care, or ensuring product quality, Sigmas provide valuable insights that drive action and results. Thus, Sigmas have a broad range of applications that extend beyond the realm of statistics. So, we've learned quite a bit about Sigmas today. We began our journey by unveiling this surprising statistical concept, didn't we? The Sigma, it's not your average statistical creature. It's a key player in the realm of statistics, a measure of variability or dispersion of a set of values. It's not just a Greek letter, but a symbol of the unexpected, the outlier, the deviation from the norm. 
We then moved on to explore the complex relationship between sigma and the normal distribution. We saw how the sigma, in its own unique way, helps us understand the spread around the mean in a normal distribution. But as we discovered, sigmas are not confined to the world of the normal distribution. They have a life beyond it, a life filled with variety and excitement. We also compared sigma to other statistical concepts, shedding light on its unique characteristics and how it stands out in the statistical landscape. Misconceptions about sigmas? Yes, we addressed those too. We dispelled the myth that sigmas are synonymous with normality and we emphasized their role as indicators of variability, not conformity. Then, we took a deep dive into the real-life applications of sigmas. We saw how they're used in industries and fields as diverse as finance, manufacturing, and even sports. Understanding sigmas, as we learned, can have profound implications for decision-making, risk assessment, and process improvement. So what's the takeaway? Sigmas are not just statistical jargon. They're tools that help us understand the world around us, the variability in it, and how we can navigate through it. They're not normal. They're exceptional. Thank you for joining us on this statistical journey. We truly appreciate your time and attention. If you found this video informative and wish to learn more about such fascinating topics, do subscribe to our channel. Until next time, keep exploring the world of statistics.